All right, what is going on, you guys? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Suki Hime, a piece of blue glass moon. And if it looks like there's something missing on screen, it's because it's me. It's my face. My face is missing. And I'll be honest with y'all, um, I'm feeling lazy as hell right now. And I didn't feel like setting up my blue screen and my camera and everything. So it's just gonna be me, my microphone, and my uh, an OBS. That's what's gonna be today. Now, obviously, the game. <laughs> But I mean, we're kicking it. We're kicking it old school, man. Because there was a while for, especially during my uh, Holy Night playthrough, where I had no face cam. It was just, uh, it was just me and my voice. It was just me and my voice. So we're kind of, kind of going back to some ye olden days. <laughs> but enough of that, man. Let's get back into it. Last time we left off, we were learning the, 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 the basics of the, the, I guess the hierarchy of vampires, especially the dead apostles. They didn't get much, too much on the, uh, I guess the true ancestors. Uh, Arcaway didn't really go into too much detail about that. Um, but basically, we're trying to find the vampire who's been stalking everybody in Suya City. And we're going to see if we can find him tonight. I'm assuming we're going to try and find him tonight. Uh, but here we go. Let's get into it, shall we? Mm. Get some nice water. Quick load. All right, here we go. <laughs> So, that's basically it. It's just a rough outline based on the assumptions you already had, but I hope that clears things up a bit for you. I kind of skipped over a lot, but if there's one thing to, be, uh, one thing to remember, it's that vampires are mostly beings with the same appearance and intelligence as those of a human. No matter how different they are on the inside, as long as they can still pass as humans, you can call them, uh, you can call them vampires. Hmm. I feel like I understand less than ever. After hearing just how monstrous uh, vampires can be, it's even harder to believe that the woman standing in front of me could be one. Well then, my turn to start asking questions. I actually forgot to ask you something pretty important earlier. Hmm? What could you possibly have to ask me? I'm not a vampire or anything. I'm just a regular student. Oh, really? Then humor me, Shiki. Just how did you kill me? Huh? Huh? I'm asking, what method you used? It wasn't runes, Kabbalah, or anything else I've encountered before, since I've already have a resistance to their mystics, which leaves magecraft that I've never encountered before, like ancient Shintoism or South American treasures. And even then, that shouldn't have been enough to kill me so completely. Answer me, Shiki. What ancient mystics did you use to prevent me from regenerating? Sorry. But I really don't know what you're talking about. Mystics? I could tell Arkawaid is dead serious, but I legitimately have no idea what she's talking about. Did you forget what Ar uh, what uh, Aoko said Like when you first met her? She said, bro, you have the mystic eyes of death perception. Did that just go out from one ear to the other? Like, <laughs> did you just forget about that, man? Okay. I'm talking about your conceptual weapon. You know, a catalyst brimming with history and ideas. 
You must have said, oh. okay. Love getting interrupted. <laughs> you must have sacred artifacts in Japan, right? Usually there's something like a staff or a blade, or a jewel or mask used in a mystic code. Come on, Shiki. Are you sure none of this rings a bell? It doesn't. I keep telling you, I'm just a regular student. I don't know anything. Liar. There's no way someone who isn't even a mage could harm me. Shiki. You're hiding something from me, aren't you? Arkway glares at me like an angry cat. But none uh, but no matter how much she looks at me, it's not like I have anything to hide. Oh now you just know now you just remembered. <laughs> Wait, I do. Well, okay, they, they took the one little flashback. <laughs> you know the one I guess this I mean to be fair, he's been wearing glasses for so long that um <laughs> that you know you would kind of naturally forget about what the hell you have. <laughs> Sorry, I guess there was something. Though, I'm not really sure if it's related. Arkwaid keeps glaring at me. The only way to resolve this is by confessing the truth. I'm not sure how to describe it, but I can see these lines that indicate where things can be cut. Lines. Exactly what I expected. There's no way she'd believe that. No one ever does. That's just the way it's always been. Hmm. Tell me more. Arkway responds with a, to with a total seriousness. It's like I said. I can see where something can be cut. Whether it's living beings, the ground, or whatever, there are these lines that cover anything that can be touched. They're like cracks in reality, and I could cut through them with ease. Does that make any sense to you? It's handy that I can use a knife to cut through steel, but it's not like I could cut anywhere I want. I have to follow the lines, so it isn't the ultimate DIY ability or anything like that. I mean, even when I cut you, any regular knife can slice through skin, you know? Uh, especially a fruit knife. <laughs> Ooh, they got a little dark here. A chill runs down my spine. Her gaze is intense enough to bring my breathing to a halt. I've heard legends of the mystic eyes of death perception. I never thought I'd actually come across a bearer. A mutant. A monster such as yourself. <laughs> Hold on. A vampire has no right to call me a monster. I'm calling you what you are. Even among vampires, none possesses mystic eyes that even can see the death of things, or that can see the death of things. The, the death of things? Can I just say that I like the color change that they did? Like, you saw how like, she was very, like, uh, colored and like, like, uh, like bright colors, but now all of a sudden there's like cool tone to her. I, I kind of like that. What else would it be? Well, 
Shiki. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> Shiki. Your eyes are a circuit to a place no living creature should be able to see. Were you born with them? No. They've been like this for a long time now. But I wasn't born like this. Now let me guess. You died once already. I'm not like you. I can't just die and come back to life. But you're close. I nearly died in an accident. I've been able to see these lines ever since. Hmm. Hmm. You likely already had the potential, but that incident was what awakened your mystic eyes of death perception. Do I have to say that? The, the can I just say mystic eyes? Uh, M E D P. Med P. Med, med, yeah, I'm not even, don't, don't don't worry about that. <laughs> This would explain why you were able to kill me. I like the, uh, <laughs> and everything goes back to a lively color. Arkwade huffs a little and turns her gaze away from me. Even though she turns from me with clear distaste, I'm somewhat grateful she no longer staring at me with those eyes of hers. Arkwade, do you know what these lines are? It's not as if I could sense them like you, but I suppose I can tell you what I've heard. あなたが見ているものはね、万物の結果、物の死にやすい箇所なのよ。もっとわかりやすく言うのなら、あらゆる存在の死、死そのものよ。What you're seeing is the end of all things. The points that can easily bring forth demise, to put it simply, is the terminus of all existence, death itself. That's pretty close to what Master told me before she gave me my glasses. The end of all things, the inevitable future of creation. All this time I didn't see it. I did everything I could not to. What <laughs> What are you talking about? All these uh, all these lines do is indicate where it's possible to cut through them. Which is why they which is exactly why they represent death. Listen, Shiki, everything has an end. The exact time something reaches its end will depend on the thing in question, but ultimately, nothing is immune. Death isn't something that just hits you uh, one day. It's something you're born with, which will one day manifest. It's the law of cause and effect. Surely you must have heard of casualty before. ここにある遺書、それは必ず消えなくてはいけない。原子の流動、エネルギーの約束ごとね。たった一つの例外、ほんの小さな間違いも秩序は許容しない。Hold on. Put them my headphones. Oh, that's why. Okay. Well, I might have to suffer through this for a moment. <laughs> if something exists, then one day it must also cease to exist. It's the flow of atoms, the equivalent exchange of energy. It's the natural order of things. And if it doesn't allow, and it doesn't allow even the slightest exception. <laughs> If an exception did exist, 
the foundations of our universe would collapse. We'd all disappear like a bubble being popped. No way. I mean, she's bringing the universe into this? How is that relevant? It's really important. That's exactly how aberrant your eyes are. He's like, well, shit, not my fucking fault I was born with them. <laughs> are you getting all of this? All things are predestined for annihilation. No matter how long something lives, no matter how powerful it is, even beings that have lived longer than the universe itself wouldn't be able to live forever. This faded end is what we call death. Death is present in all things from their conception. So if you have the capacity to comprehend it, and your brain and eyes can tune into it, then seeing death shouldn't be or should be entirely possible. That's the true nature of those lines you see, Shiki. To explain it from a human perspective, you're seeing the predestined breaking points of, of atomic bonds. Or maybe they're like the uh, what if telomeres built into a being's genes, which someday express its cause of death. Either way, these lines you see are where things easily die. In fact, their death itself. The fact that you've lived like this for so long is astonishing. I can't believe you're even sane. Arkway speaks in a detached, matter-of-fact voice. She doesn't know anything about me, so I wish she wouldn't joke around. I understand what she's saying, but that doesn't mean I have to agree with any of it. There's no way that can be real. No way that anyone can see it. Take off your glasses. <laughs> How about that, big dog? But you see it, don't you? Normally, a creature is killed when its throat is cut. It ceases to function as a consequence of the cut. Flipping that premise around, you could say a creature whose throat can't be cut can't be killed. Oh, this is my death we're talking about, so things are a little different. You, on the other hand, are capable of bypassing that rule. If you were to face an opponent who could prevent external factors from killing them, you would be killing them ahead of, these, of those factors. You kill them, and the result is death. Yeah, I think that's what happened when you kill someone. Well, well not in your case there, Ark. <laughs> but it's not uh, but it's not the way that they died. What? But it's not that they died because they were cut. In your case, you kill them, and as a result they're cut. If you're not a monster, then what should I call you? You say they show you some lines that you can cut through, but those eyes of yours are more unique than any power I've ever heard of. You have the eyes of the Grim Reaper, Shiki. A god who can bring 
an end to all things. He's like, well, fuck, okay, when you put that in, in that way. She's right. That's exactly why I've been in denial. I spent so long trying to ignore the existence of the lines. The truth is, I've known for a long time. It's exactly like she says. My eyes, my life, they're nothing more than a blemish on this earth. A mistake. Ever since that day, I've borne a witness to a dying world. I've been forced to know that everything I uh, see could crumble in a mere moment. All this time, omens of death have been with me every step of the way. So what then? I could kill you too. I could kill anyone. Anything. I'm dangerous, aren't I? So? Really? You want to give it a try then? Arkwe turns the light in the room off and moves to the window. She slides the curtains open. Outdoor light spills to the glass, allowing me to see again. The woman in white is framed by the pale moonlight. Go on then. Give it all you got. Oh, wait. Can you not see the lines with your glasses on? You sure about this? It's a peculiar thing, really. I've never taken my glasses off in front of someone before, but I still raise my hand to remove them. All of Arkawaite's accusations must have been uh, must have put me on edge. Urged by my own frustration, I take my glasses off. So wait, he's not going to mention that the reason why he's stayed sane for so long is because the glasses or I mean I guess the way she said it she must know that they have some magical property to them right lines start to squirm and stretch across the room my world is filled with death huh let me guess Arkway he's gonna see Arkway she's got like no lines on her that's exactly what's gonna be right I'm witnessing a miracle I can hardly believe it. Oh, look at the moon. The moon shines a pearl white. I fucking called it. What'd I just say? Also, I kind of got a... Seeing the, the what's it called here, I kind of got a... I got a, a, a copyright... Not a strike, what is it? Claim? Because uh, the OST... Or the opening that played in, uh, in my last video... Had like copyrighted music... Of course, it only affects viewers from Japan. I don't think I get anybody from Japan. <laughs> but it's just like, I was like, I, I should have seen that one coming because it happened to me back in uh, Holy Night. But here we go. The lines that have been so faint during the daytime appear to almost glow underneath the moonlight. Yeah, what, what I, I also hate that I kind of called that. Like, oh, yeah, let me guess. She's not going to have them because she's special. Well, in the middle of it all. The lines on Arkway's body are so faint that if I weren't concentrating, I probably wouldn't even have noticed them at all. Oh yeah, you can barely see them right there. What is this? Why? Yeah, you can kind of see it on, like, on her body there. Yeah, just like on her body, that's it. I don't see any other ones there. Well, you can barely see the lines, right? I'm a creature that has no death at night. So even with those eyes of yours, you probably couldn't kill me right now. Hmm. Though I suppose you might be able to see them faintly, huh? I can't be killed at night, 
but it isn't out of the question during the day. We managed to capitalize on that weakness. I just come back from a big job, so my resistance to instantaneous death must have been lower than usual. Oh, excuse me. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so she's basically... Wait, what? So she can't die at night? I guess, I mean, well, to be fair, the name of the fucking game is... Moon Princess. <laughs> and that's exactly who she is, so that I guess that would make sense, right? Uh... So, wait, does that work against the other... Or, I guess because she's a true ancestor, right? It's, it, I guess that only factors her and not, like, say, the dead apostles that we're going to be seeing later. Hmm. And since you've already killed me once, I guess I've weakened enough that even at night, I have a death. A quote-unquote death. Right? In other words, I'm not immortal right now, but what do you think, Shiki? Could you cut through my lines? I wonder if I could. If there's a line, I can cut it. But looking at her right now, I'm not sure if I could slice through her as easily as I did then, in a fraction of a second. I think it'd be kind of hard. The lines are fading in and out of my vision, so it'd be impossible to make a clean cut unless you were asleep or something. Exactly. That's your biggest weak point. Even if you can see death, you still need to trace those lines yourself. I may be weak now, but I'm not slow enough that you can ca that you could catch me. She's right. I couldn't even keep up with the speedy animal, let alone catch one. And if I can't catch my prey first, then there's no way I, uh, I'm cutting through the uh, through its lines either. Which means, even if I see the lines, I can't kill something that moves. Just as her words alleviate my deepest fears, the vampire laughs. Right. It's funny. It's all a big comforting joke. No matter how many hypotheticals she makes, or how many of my flaws are pointed out, nothing will change the way I see the world. I'm broken. I'm something that shouldn't get mixed in with the rest of, the, of this world. But despite that, when I'm faced with this incredible, impossible being, it feels like everything I've taken for granted gets thrown out the window. Just like a magnificent flower caressed by the moonlight. It's not like I wanted eternity. All I wanted was for something I could touch. For something that could give me the hope I needed to keep living. Ouch. A sharp pain stabs at my brain. The lines make my head throb. I put my glasses on and trade my miraculous view of for the ordinary world. Arcoid eyes me suspiciously. You okay? What is it now? Um, nothing. You can't see the lines when you wear those glasses. Yeah, basically. So when I met shortly after my accident gave them to me. I only use the lenses now, but thanks to these, uh, but thanks to these that I what, but thanks to these. What the fuck? But it's but oh, but it's thanks to these that I've been able to live a relatively normal life. I missed one crucial word there. Huh. That makes sense. No matter how mentally strong you are, facing death on a constant basis is bound to drive you insane. You'd gouge your eyes out by now. Alright, 
God damn it, there's like a lash and stuff stuck in my eyeball. Um, listen, could you stop spouting, or casually spouting horrifying stuff like that? And quit getting so close. Seriously, stop it. Get away from me. Hey, keep stepping closer and, and, and so help me I'll throw this vase at you. I retreat, sensing the impending danger. But my threat falls on deaf ears. Arkaway can sometimes resemble a giant cat. Oh, the, the irony of that, right? Whose curiosity isn't easily sated. Hey, can I look at them? No way, these are important to me. It's not like I want to break them. Come on, I just want a teensy little peek. Pretty please? Why is she talking like that? I. Ooh, okay, so relent and hand them over. Not hand them, not, I need these. That's like if I gave my glasses to somebody. <laughs> you know? It's like, can I see those? Like, yeah, but I, I need those to see, you know? I don't, I mean, personally, I don't see uh, lines of death, but I can't see two feet in front of me. <laughs> She's definitely up to something. The fact that she, completely unprompted, claimed she wouldn't break them is highly suspicious. Yeah, no way. Not even to take a glance. I've seen how stupidly strong you are. I'm not risking the chance of you accidentally crushing them with your hands. Uh, wow, rude. I just did what I had to do back in that alley. Normally, you'd be stronger than me anyway. And besides, it's not like I'm the type to carelessly break stuff. Arkwaite steps closer and closer as she tells me this, her hand raised ominously and slowly inching, uh, slowly inching towards my glasses. She's 100% planning to grab them and make a break for it. Before this turns into a straight scene out of a horror movie, I quickly drop down on the sofa out of her reach. Hmm? Damn straight. I'm already playing along with enough of your nonsense. I'm drawing a line on my glasses. I've, I have no way of replacing them if you broke them, you know? Or were you planning to give me another pair? Hmm. I know where to find a lot of magical items, but I guess replacing those might be a bit impossible. <laughs> Fine, I get it. You're so stingy, Shiki. Hoarding those glasses all to yourself. By her childish response, I get the sense that she might have only been interested in them because I said they were important to me. Yep, you got me. Humans can't just casually come back to life, so we have to be more careful with our belongings. You do realize I couldn't even help you with these glasses, or without these glasses, right? The constant headaches alone would be enough to do me in. Well, you better start taking that leave, big dog. Hmm. I suppose seeing death all the time would strain your brain. I bet there's an interesting connection between your eyes and those glasses, but I'll leave it at that for now. I'll tell you more about it some other time, though. No thanks, sorry, but I don't enjoy long conversations. 
Really? I think talking to people is a lot of fun. Even if, even if my words can only get half of what I want to say across, it still makes my heart flutter. Arcoid beams an honest, unreserved smile. It really looks like she's the, what it really looks like the simple act of conversing is enough to make her happy. Are we on to the next scene? I think we are. No oh god, we're still in the damn hotel. The night drags on. Arcoid is seated on the on the bed. I'm on the sofa, aimlessly staring at the clock. It's just past 4 a.m. Past 4 a.m.? Jesus Christ. And, uh, dude, uh, dude, Aki is about to fucking fillet this man alive. <laughs> dude, Aki is about to annihilate Shiki, dog. Holy shit. An hour or so till uh, to go till sunrise. <laughs> One more hour, huh? Nothing out of the ordinary has happened so far, and Arcway doesn't look the slightest bit nervous. The hotel is perfectly peaceful. I've been so pretty nervous about... Well, I've been pretty nervous myself, but it's starting to look like I don't need to be. It's nice. I have a feeling that the night will pass uneventfully just like this. Oh, well. Famous last words. Hey, Shiki. For the untied time this night, Arcoid calls out to me. Ah, uh, what is it? I'm pretty sure we're out of conversation topics by now. Really? It doesn't feel. Uh, it feels like a shame to sit in silence when we have the time to talk. Yeah, well, I can't keep up with your chatter anymore. Damn, he's calling her the, uh, the mayor of, of Yapville. <laughs> it's been six hours. Six hours talking to you is even more exhausting than guard duty. Guard duty. Arkaway shoots me a dissatisfied pout. It's been like this all night. For whatever reason, Arkaway just keeps talking to me. I told her that if she's so weak, she should uh, she should get some re uh, some sleep instead. But it's more fun to talk. How did we end up like this? Well, you kind of murdered her, so <laughs> I think that's how. And she just so happened to come back to life. So <laughs> I really have no idea what's going through her mind. On top of that, I'm starting to get hungry. Now that I think about it, it's been nearly an entire day since I ate something. The last meal I had was yesterday's breakfast. If you're hungry, why don't you just order something? We're staying in a nice hotel, so you might as well get some room service. Nah. Nah, it's fine. The hunger keeps me on my toes. What about you, though? You're weak and refusing to rest. Shouldn't you at least eat something? If you're not eating, then I won't either. Normal meals have their benefits, but it's so boring to eat alone. Normal meals? That's supposed to. Oh. Right. She doesn't look like one, but she's still a vampire. Her meals will normally consist of human blood. She said it herself vampires need human blood to survive. Which means she drunk the blood of others before. I wonder how many humans she's killed in her life. I still look glance at Arcoid. I just can't wrap my head around it. No matter how many times she explains the intricacies of vampires to me, 
I just can't imagine her drinking blood. Why are you staring? Do I have something on my face? I quickly look away. It's her turn to stare at me now. The corners of her lips pull into a mischievous grin. Are you curious? Huh. Uh, about what exactly? About how many people's blood I've tasted. People's. She saw right through me. Her happy, smug smile is enough to unsettle me. I don't like it, but I can't deny that I'm morbidly curious as to how many people she's killed. Uh, uh, of course I am. I'm supposed to help you out, right? If I don't, then how am I supposed to predict when you, you have a change of heart and decide to tear me to pieces? It's a legitimate concern to have. Arkway nods along, seemingly satisfied with my reasoning. Alright, then let me ask you. How many people's blood do you think I've drunk? He's like, six. She's like, not close, he's like, hundred. <laughs> you know the Spongebob meme? Six. Hundred. You need six hundred to pass. <laughs> Arkwaite hops off the bed with a bounce and heads back over to the window. How many? Arkwaite smiles sweetly. She seems to be enjoying herself. She's clearly trying to get a rise out of me. Fine. I'll play this game. This strange woman has had to kill it at least. <laughs> we will just go 10 people. But we'll, we'll, we'll give our because again, I'm assuming because she's an ancestor, she doesn't really need to consume human blood at the level of dead apostle would, right? Because she already explained it how basically uh, dead apostles have to like create basically like um, like human like food farms and shit like that to consume blood. So I'm assuming. You know, and considering she's considered a, a natural creature of the world, as we saw on the whiteboard, I'm assuming, again, she doesn't need a lot to keep her, I guess, put together, I guess. Well, the, the irony of me saying that. Um, so I'm going to say 10. I think she's, I think like 10 or, like I would say at least maybe 15. Ironic, uh, ironically, ideally maybe 15 throughout her lifetime but a, a 1000 is kind of insane but i would see more of like a dead apostle doing that than a true ancestor i could be wrong though i could be completely wrong so we're just going to say 10 people is 10 too few oh fuck <laughs> not even close somewhere in the hundred oh. then somewhere in the hundreds Oh, fuck. Okay, we were... Okay, she's in the thousands? That's insane. Sorry, but you're way off. Uh, in the thousands? Another swing and a miss. Arkway chuckled softly to herself. Oh, is she gonna be like, yeah, I've never had... <laughs> is she gonna be the one exception? She's like, yeah, I've actually never... Drank anybody's blood. God, is that another? I hope I don't. I hope that's not. Because I would I would hate to be the... Okay, Arkoid, you're too predictable. <laughs> you're too predictable, Arkoid. I'm not angry at her, but I'm starting to feel very frustrated. I can't believe I'm saying this, but more than 10,000? Again, way off. Seriously, Shiki, you went from tens to thousands in a heartbeat. Do you really think that so poorly of me, you big meanie? Am I wrong? I figure vampires wouldn't really have any scruples about this kind of thing. Humans eat when we get hungry too. 
If you need blood to survive, then you're gonna take what you need, right? Yeah, that's usually the case. But you know, in the 800 years I've been alive, I've never drunk any blood. Not a single drop. And I've never killed a normal human either. Uh, oh, I, I called it. What the hell did I just say, dude? Uh, Arco, you're too predictable. I knew they were going to pull that shit of like, oh no, she's a pure maid and she doesn't. She doesn't need the blood. I'm, I I would have given her the benefit of the doubt, like saying like 10, maybe 15, if need be. But in 800 years, I'm not, I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I don't believe that art. You're lying. You're lying. You're lying. Such a weird thing to hear a vampire. Uh, it's such a weird thing to hear a vampire to say. But I still find myself asking the question. Are you telling me the truth? Of course. I mean, the thought of drinking blood is terrifying to me. You think it's terrifying? Even though you're a vampire? Well, I'm a bit of a coward, I guess. So, I'd say even now I might only qualify as half a vampire. Arkwade utters the words as she idly glances out the window. She pauses, the ga uh, she pauses to gaze at the night sky in a drawn out moment of quiet. As I watch her, I feel like she's becoming less distant, a hazy phantasm drifting away or distinct. Only, only half, huh? Just muttering those words provides an odd relief. Wait, why does it feel like a load has been taken off my shoulders? That's weird, right? Yep, it is definitely weird. Is something wrong, Shiki? Nah, nothing. It's just thinking, uh, just thinking how funny it is that you're a chicken. Chicken? Chicken? You think I'm a bird? Arkwade tilts her head in confusion. She really doesn't look a vampire in the slightest. It's only natural for me to be relieved. How could I not be? It turned out that the person in front of me isn't anywhere near as evil as I feared. If what she say is true, then there's no reason for me to worry about Arkwade spontaneously killing me. And it's not just my newfound sense of safety that's bringing me relief. There must be something wrong with me. The idea that Arkway doesn't count herself a full-fledged vampire is what has me the happiest of all. I can't believe I was so wrong about her this whole time. Huh? Just as I'm about to relax around Arkwade, I'm struck by a sharp sense of pain and vertigo. Oh, that anemia is hidden. I mean, my homeboy, you haven't eaten in basically a whole fucking day. That anemia was going to hit you hard, big dog. <laughs> my vision is blanketed by a white haze. This isn't the same as my anemia. I'm still thinking too clearly for that. A strange cold chill accompanies my headache. What is it, Shiki? Your forehead's all sweaty. It is? I wipe the back of my hand across my forehead as I reply, and I met with a far more wet, sticky sweat than I'm anticipating. This is weird. Judging by the sweat, you think I was in a sauna. As I verge by the pool of anxiety welling up in my chest, my eyes dart to the digital clock. It's 4.32 a.m. Too early for the sun to uh, beat back against the chilly night air. The clock itself lists the current temperature outside as a cool 11 degrees Celsius. It's way too cold for me to start breaking a sweat like this. So then why? Why does this room feel like I'm standing outside of a, uh, outside on a hot summer day? 
Arcoid, aren't you feeling hot? Huh? Huh? Not really. I mean, it's only 38 degrees Celsius. That's nothing. I might be weakened, but I think I should be able to hold out till 3,000 degrees or so. 3,000? Holy shit. I was not expecting to read that. I'm, I'm an idiot for even asking. Did she say 3,000 degrees Celsius? So you could throw a vampire on a grill and they still wouldn't burn? <laughs> no. This isn't the time to be thinking about that. The digital display still lists the temperature as 11 degrees. So either the clock is malfunctioning, or my body is. That's probably the latter. I searched the room for another thermometer. What the hell? As I scanned the room, my gaze becomes transfixed on the monitor displaying a live feed on the uh, of the hotel lobby. Is that... fire? I could hardly believe my eyes. It's something you only see in a movie. Oh, it's the boy. Flames spread through the lobby, like water spilling from a sink. Mixed with the thick black smoke, I see a humanoid silhouette. It gives me the impression of a massive predator, a carnivore that eats those like it. Arcoid! Arcoid remains silent. Is it hostility? I read in her expression. No. It's something more like contempt. The two of us must be entering or entertaining very different thoughts as we stare at this monitor. It takes less than a minute for the lobby to be entirely gulfed by the sea of flames. The fire alarm doesn't ring. The digital thermometer still hasn't changed. But my body is drenched in sweat, and simply breathing the hot, dry air is enough to parch my throat. There's no time to think. They're here. Those flaming corpses from before have come to the hotel. <laughs> Shit. I make a run for the window to inspect the situation outside. The town looks the same as ever. The hotel is bathed in flames, but nobody outside seems to have noticed a thing. There's no sign of aid rushing to the hotel, nor any humans frantically trying to escape the fire. Arcoid! What the hell is going on here? Arcoid keeps her mouth firmly shut, unwilling to say a word. Like, look, I'm fucking roasting over here, okay? <laughs> Time simply passes. The temperature feels like it's getting hotter by the second. My skin feels like it could burn any minute. I don't know what thing I don't know what things are like outside our room, nor do I have any idea what things are like on the floors below. All I know is the awful, ominous feeling gripping my chest, telling me that it's already too late. Arcoid is still silent. Is it because she's worried or frustrated? Her arms are crossed like she's hugging herself, or maybe she's trying to hold herself back. She said uh, she said she wouldn't leave this room. She says she didn't have the power right now. In which case, what did I come here for? Oh, we're gonna stay inside, because I'm pretty sure this is gonna lead to a bad ending, so... I mean, we could... You know what, fuck it, we're gonna save real quick. We're gonna save. You know, I, I, I just saved, I'm thinking I'm not gonna do it. Note, blue flames. Ooh. What does that mean? Or we're just gonna stay in our room. I should stay in the room to observe the situation. It's better to observe the situation from in here. It could be reckless for me to go out there alone while Arcwade is still recovering. I mean, I don't know what it's like to have that Florida heat hit him. <laughs> that Florida heat and that humidity is what gets you. Time continues to pass. My fingers tighten around the knife. As, it, as my eyes fixate on the video feed of the lobby bathed in flame. Arcoid's eyes are closed. Looking at her now reminds me of how beautiful, no, how powerful she, uh, how powerful she looked in the moonlight. It's been no more than half a day since the fight in the alley. Surely she's regained a bit of her power by now. Okay. 
It's hot. Mm. It's like I'm standing inches away from a massive bonfire, cooking and smoldering as the air in front of me distorts from the heat. It's getting hard to breathe. I figured that it'd be safe as long as it stayed inside the room, but my head is feeling light. <coughs> Sorry. But my head is feeling light. At this rate, I'm going to pass out. Should I go out there, knowing it's dangerous? I still have time. But just as I start to reevaluate my decision, the lights go out. The mysteriously high temperature suddenly drops again. At the same time, I hear it. An unending, an unending, what, an unending flurry of knocks against the door. Fiki, are you ready? Arkaway's words are the only thing that breaks through the darkness. I swallow as I listen to the pounding. Ready? Ready for... There's no time for me to finish my question. If staying in this room was a mistake, then I guess asking something like that was a mistake too. Hearing the splinter in the wood, I whip, I whip around to face the door. It was just a split second decision, but I distanced myself from the door in the hopes it would be safer. Little did I know what would happen next. The two dogs that broke down the door burst into the room. Arkaway slashes at them with her claws, and the second she does, the room is flooded with fire, hot flames washing over every corner until it's filled to the brim. Unless we're dealing with incredible temperatures, a human won't die instantly when exposed to, uh, to fire. But these flames hit like a blunt weapon, forcing enough to turn the body to ash in a single blow. It reminds me of a flamethrower. A flamethrower might look like it's launching flames at you, but in reality, it merely douses the target with fuel, igniting it a microsecond later. This fire is pretty similar. The blade strikes across the room like a whip reducing everything it touches to cinders in it in an instant. What chance does the human body have against something that can melt its way through a wall or table? There's one small mercy at the center of this inferno, is that the fire lashed straight through my waist and immediately incinerated everything above, sparing me the slow agony of burning alive. Damn it, did we get another bad ending? <laughs> oh, we did. Okay, well. Good thing I what's a call, because I don't feel like... I'm going to be honest with you, I don't feel like watching the Teach Me CL thing, so... She said she wouldn't leave this room? Yep, yeah, okay. In which case, what did I come here for? Alright, we're going to do this. I should go outside and investigate. I still got time. Alright, not this time, CL. Here I go. I take a short, deep breath to clear my head. I search for something I can use as a weapon, but a quick survey of the room doesn't give me anything. I swallow hard. I swallow my hesitation. Take my knife from the bag and head for the door. Shiki? I'm just going to scope things out. Don't leave the room until I get back. Arkaway looks like she wants to say something, but I tear my gaze away and head into the hallway. It's dark. I guess the lights must have malfunctioned. The only light I see is a far away glow from the elevator hall. My throat burns more now. The very air is thick and scraping me against like sandpaper. The silence in the hallway is unsettling. You can hear a pin drop. There isn't a single sign of life. No. Blank, running in terror. No burn. The utter silence is making me question what I saw on the monitor just now. Everything seems... normal. I walk through the hallway. Sweat forms into beads and runs down my forehead. It's so quiet. I'm starting to feel that they, I'm the intruder here. Intruder. 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 Normally, you'd exterminate any pest that intruded a place like this. That's all I can do to calm myself now. I readjust the grip on the knife so the sweat doesn't make it slip from my palm. 
I feel nauseous. There's a pressure near my temples. Somewhere between my eyes and my brain, my nerves experience a strange pull. It's as if my eyes are trying to crawl into my brain cavity. Or maybe my brain's trying to swallow my eyes. I bite back against the dull, aching pain as I tra traverse with the heat wave blasting me from all sides. My eyes grow heavy. My eyelids feel like they're gaining mass. My body sways. I might just pass out. I know the feeling too well. That's how I feel just before I collapse from anemia. It hurts. The pain is so unbearable. I tell you, I have to take my glasses off. Uh oh, my boy's going into fucking sicko mode. Let's go. I'm fucking hyped. Let's do it. I look into the direction of the elevators. This corridor is so long. It's got to be more than 20 meters to the elevators from here. It's too far, I tell myself. Go back to the room. What is this? A few more steps and I'll be... And there'll be no more going back. A clear sound. The gentle chime of the elevator shatters the silence. As if the herald... As if to herald the destruction of this pure, empty space devoid of life. A foreboding chill stops me in my tracks. My eyes are pulled towards the unwanted intrusion. The small elevator light stops. It's arrived at its destination. I can see the line stretching across the elevator door in the distance. Though, shrouded by so many, a dense web of them, I can barely see the door. The door's open. I peer inside the crampled metal box. Or I peer, yeah, I peer inside, I said that right. Damn. The inside is overflowing with flesh. The flesh of things that were alive until a moment ago. My breathing ceases. Just like my brain refuses to process the things I'm seeing, so do my lungs abandon their duty. I stare at the scene within the elevator. The thick chunks of red meat are packed tight as they can be within the metal box. In the middle of it all are two dogs tearing at their morbid feast. My vision turns red. With a nauseating squelching noise, a gelatinous mass of meat oozes out of the elevator. A sea of blood, carcass, bone, brain, fingers, and viscera. The pool of carnage only houses two living residents, the dogs. The rational part of my brain refuses to accept the scene as reality. At the end of the hallway, the dogs are still digging into the uh, mutilated cadavers. The terrible new sounds travel up to the elevator shaft. Discordant screams spill into the hallway. If I strain my ears, I could just make out the sounds of flesh being gnawed on. Intermingled with the shrieks of despair, so anguished they hardly sound human. It feels like my hearing has found a shortcut to my imagination. Even though I can't see with my eyes, the carnage is all too clear in my mind's eye. People being burned alive. People being eaten alive. A man notices the unusual temperature and leaves his room to flee. The second he opens the door, he's enveloped by a hellish flame that roasts him to the bone. A young girl sobs in despair, locked in a room. When the flames from the lobby reach her floor, she's in the bathtub. The water steams and bubbles, boiling her alive and turning her ruptured flesh to ash from the inside out. Many clamor to get into the elevator that arrives. Inside, they find it already packed with bodies of those who tried to escape before. By the time the newcomers realize those present are no longer human, they're already being consumed. Damn, this game got very fucking deep. <laughs> I love this game, dude. It gets so, like, graphic and detailed. I fucking love it. It's so good. There are two types of screams. Those born from the fear of being alive, and those born from the fear of being burned alive. There are no exceptions. The small elevator is a microcosm of what the hotel has become. This vision of hell is so close, I can feel the agony flush against my skin. I want to throw up, but I can't. If I did, I'd become a part of this horrible ocean of red. Uh -oh. 
I force my body to remember how to breathe. I grind my teeth together to regain a sense of control. The dogs notice me. As soon as they do, all sound from the floor stops below. That can only mean one thing. No one else is alive. The dogs break into a sprint towards me. I'm the only prey left within their hunting grounds. The black hounds approach me. Their bodies are marked with countless lines. But they're no use to me now. My mind is too paralyzed to do anything. I can't decide whether to fight or flee. Big dog, you better start fighting. One of the dogs leaps. No human could come close to matching its speed. It covers the 20 meters of the hallway in less than two seconds. It maws, uh, its maw wide open. Sharp, saw-like teeth reach from my throat. The dog's movements are fast and deadly efficient. The second my mind manages to process that it's leaping at me, the beast closes its fangs around my neck with a terrible uh, gnashing sound. This is where Shiki Tono dies. Damn, two bad endings? Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, oh, hold on. No, that isn't right. This won't kill me. I won't die here. Seeing death isn't new to me. It was a hot summer day. It feels so long ago, yet it was merely seven years ago. Or it was merely seven years. Back then, I went into something far more horrifying. Stab. I thrust my knife into the forehead of the dog that tried to gnaw at my throat. As if on autopilot, my arm swung the second monster's canine... What? Swung up the second monster's canines to touch my skin before it could pierce my carotid artery. I surprise even myself. Like a machine whose only function is cutting and slicing, I thread the knife through the dog's forehead with a mechanical precision. It comes easy, as if I'm merely cutting through one of the dog's lines. Normally, destroying an animal's brain wouldn't cause its body to cease functioning immediately. The muscles will move in spasm in response to the brain's final signals, carrying out the last commands to the best of their ability. Even if I tore my blade straight through the dog's head, its fangs would still tear, uh, still tear through my neck. But this is different. I didn't just kill the dog, I brought it death. Death means total, uh, what, cessation? No matter how monstrous the dog was, it lost every ounce of power the second I killed it. It falls limply to the ground. The second dog is already lunging toward me in its place. I stab the knife into its wide open jaw. My blade buries into its wet flesh. The skin of the dog may be oddly tough, but the insides are soft and yielding, its flesh and bone having long rotted. But I messed up this time. This, di this dog's lines are not on its head. They're all congregated around its chest. I might have managed to stab it, but the damage done is little more than a flesh wound. The knife has pierced the dog's maw, reaching the back of its head, which naturally means that the hand holding the knife is now fully enveloped by the creature's mouth. The dog is still very much alive. It clamps his jaw shut around my outstretched arm. I feel the strain as it pulls against the soft cartilage between my hand and wrist, and at any moment now, it will tear straight through my flesh. The pain is enough to snap me back to reality. This fucking hurts. <laughs> okay, I wasn't ready to see that. Or read that. I know there was a little bit of cursing, but shit. You used the big one? Alright, I fuck with it. What the hell am I doing? Getting my arm torn to shreds just to stick the knife into a dog's mouth. You piece of... I struggle and squirm, trying to wrench my arm out of its vice-like grip. As something gnashes at my arm, an intense t pain shoots through my nerves like a firework. Its teeth feel like it's stuck deep within my arm. But it's awfully lively for something with a knife in its skull. The dog presses its weight against me, toppling both of us and pinning me down to the carpet. My back is driven hard against the floor. But even now, its grip on my arm hasn't loosened one bit. Even with my knife still plunged deep into its head, the black dog tightens its jaw further. It's going to rip my arm off. This is insane. 
What kind of dog keeps biting down in a situation like this? Damn you. Something warm and wet drips down to my elbow. Red blood is dribbling from the dog's frenzied, quivering lips. It might be the dog's blood trickling down my arm from the knife. Or it might be my own blood, flowing freely as the dog tries to render my arm into mincemeat. To my scrambled brain, it doesn't matter much. Let. Me. Go. The dog refuses to release its prize. There's no way I could run away with the dog still clinging to my arm. Not that running away was ever an option to begin with. Nor did I have the intention of doing so. I just wanted to survive. And in order to survive, there was only one ever... Uh, there was only... What? Only ever one condition. There you go. All I have to do is kill. Well, how do I do that? It won't be long till one of my arms gets chewed off. That arm is still gripping the knife. The full weight of the dog has me trapped against the carpet. Even if I manage to pull my arm free, chances are the dog would have its jaws around my neck the very next second. <laughs> the desperate circumstances force a weak chuckle to escape my lips. I just need some time to assess the situation. Some time to rethink it through, or really think it through. That's how I've always done things. That's how I was taught. Like, look. See how there are plenty of lines running along the back of the dog's head? The path to survival is blindingly clear. This is a wild beast. A monster that devours humans. But when it's this close to me, I'm painfully aware of its wild, beating heart, burning with its own desire to live. I was gonna do like some shit where it's like it's biting on his arm, but he just like pushes his hand deeper into its mouth as he's cutting through the fucking lines. That's gonna be insane. It clamps down on my arm even harder than before. I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. I wish it was tearing my own throat or tearing out my own throat. It's killed or be killed. A natural, universal law. So why? Why does this supposed cruelty of action give me such pause? A thick drop of blood splashes against my face. The red fluid drops down my forehead and into my eyes. My vision is painted a deep, dark crimson. It burns itself into my retinas until red is all I can see. The warm, viscous liquid strikes me as oddly familiar. My consciousness slowly slips away from me. Even so, I can't kill something that's alive. Hypocrite. You already killed something so much bigger than some mutt. Ah, that's right. But that time was different. With Arcoid, Shaky Tona wasn't thinking clearly at all. Even when I killed that big dog, it was as if my body moved on its own, without my input. But this time, it requires me to make a conscious decision. Didn't Master tell you, Shiki, to use this power for yourself and not for anyone else? That's why. As long as I stay who I am, as long as I remain a decent human being, I will never take any life for granted. Hypocrite. You've done it all before, long ago. Hello. So are we going to find out who the fuck that kid is or no? A bad dream from my childhood. Look what's holding you back now. Uh, look. What's holding you back now? It was a hot summer day. It's killed or be killed. Before me is a figure of young boy drenched in blood. You've already. My hands are stained with warm red blood. Killed before, haven't you? I stab. Rather than extract my arm, I bury it deeper as I slice through the beast's skull. What I tell you, fuck it, I knew he was gonna do that. This is so sick. A pain shriek echoes in my eardrums. Unable to cry out properly with my arm jammed down, down its throat, 
The dog wail resembles a woman's shrill scream. It must be in tremendous pain. Not that it matters. I drive the knife deeper inside, together with my mangled arm. The blade pokes out from the back of the dog's skull. I split its skull and effortlessly slice through, uh, through its hide, scattering globs of blood and brain across the carpet. Before I know it, I thrust both my knife and my arm cleanly through the back of the dog's skull. And yet, it still lives. There's only one thing left for me to do. I take the knife from my bloody right hand and move it to my left. The impaled dog's body trembles and squirms, seemingly pleading for mercy. It even stops digging its fangs into my flesh as if to show remorse. Like I fucking care. I run my blade along the beast's lines and quickly dismantle its body. Like I fucking care, yo. I, I'm loving it, dude. I'm fucking loving it. I love this shit so far. It's so good. Goddamn. I don't want to say this is the action I was missing in Holy Night, but fuck, it's here in Tsukihime, man. I fucking love it. All right, but I think that's actually where we're going to end today's episode, you guys. Damn. Woo. Now we're getting into some fucking action, ladies and gentlemen. I'm I'm here for it. I am 100% here for it. I'm loving it. Boy, Sheik is going into fucking... Uh, it's going into fucking, uh, what is it? He's, he's going off, man. He's going off and I'm, I'm hyped. So we killed the two dogs. I might have to put that warning up on this video because it might be a little sensitive slash graphic to anybody who's a fan of dogs. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's sick, man. We're going to see who this mysterious vampire that's came to visit us in the hotel. So with that being said. I hope you guys did enjoy today's video, and if you did, like, comment, and subscribe. It has been your boy, White Album. I will see you guys next time.